Rowdy deck is probably the worst of the three. I think the, the Diamond Wild probably has the most value for your dollar, but the Blood Rubies also seem, looks like it's pretty competitive too. And those are decks that you could definitely upgrade. Yeah, they also don't contain any cards that are going to be rotating when the next set releases, which is true. I would I would recommend investing in a router that doesn't die. Having having a router that dies seems like a mistake. So opponent is summon a random troop. You meet the threshold requirements to play with. One attack and one defense, it gets speed. Interesting. Um, so probably an aggressive deck. Um, I'm going to play this out. I have, so this is an escape goat, which it starts as a 0-1, and every time it attacks, it gets a little bit bigger. Uh, I have a saber tooth here. Our hand's kind of clunky against a potentially aggressive deck. You think this game is worth buying or investing? I never heard of this game until, until you played it last weekend. I mean... I think if it's a game you think you might enjoy, games are fun and it's definitely worth playing. I enjoy I enjoy the gameplay a lot. How fast would it take me to pick up this game? Uh, if you have a magic background, learning hex is basically the equivalent of like learning a new magic format. There's some there's some subtleties in how like learning uh, how to identify like which champions mean which decks and stuff like that. But I think that's still very akin to like learning a new format in magic. I think, I think we might get run out of this game. On the draw here, my hand was a little bit slow. I probably should have, speaking of identifying champions, I probably should have looked at this and realized that it probably meant something aggressive. Um, so I get to play my second resource here. So Primordial Sabretooth is a really, a really flexible card. So it is a seven cost five drop that deals five damage when it comes into play, but it also has this ability where we can pay two and roast something basically. So I think I think I want to kill the escape goat because the escape goat's just gonna keep getting larger here on me. And then this goes back into our deck when we kill something with it. Also, someone asked about the, the longevity of the cards that you buy. So Hex is a full trading card game, so you can buy, sell, trade on a secondary market. It doesn't have a dusting system like a lot of the collectible card games that happen today. And Hex just announced that they're gonna be supporting their non-rotating format more, which is which is good. Having, having good support for non-rotating formats, I think, is important in, in a trading card game where you can't get rid of random cards. Um, all right, I'm going to play this. This Nameless Draw is a resource that creates another card in my hand. And while this card's effect, bury three cards off the top of the opponent's deck, isn't particularly good. I have cards like Theorize on my deck that let me draw and discard. So hopefully we're going to find a light em up here so we can put a blocker into play. That's unfortunate. Yeah, we're down to 13 already here, so I, I think we're probably dead. I guess next turn I get to Painstoke, sister. So Painstoke, sister, is one of our combo pieces, but it's also just like a pretty reasonable card. So 3 4 for 4, that whenever we di discard a card, it gets to deal 1 damage to something. That's a Mama Yeti. Uh, yeah, well, that's, that's pretty brutal. Um, it's going to be 2 5 10. Yeah, we're very dead. Morning, Dingo Dango. So, one of the other thing that's nice about Hex is that unlike a lot of the digital games, uh, their ladder is best of three. So, even though my opponent's playing an aggressive deck that kind of caught uh, the hand I kept off guard, I get to play a best of three to kind of make up for the fact that I got caught off guard there. So, I'm going to bring in these Jouncing Carnages as a way to destroy their stuff. An extra Rune Bind is pretty good for buying tempo. Um... Usually I want to trim some of these unhinges. This is an interrupt, so it can interrupt a troop. And we have a lot of elementals, so this card's often very cheap, but just like getting too many interrupts caught in our hand is generally bad against an aggressive deck. Uh, Scars of War is probably pretty good. This deals two damage to all troops in play. Theorize is likely too slow in this matchup. I probably just like don't have time to dirtle around to draw extra cards. So definitely want my scars. Maybe I don't want... Nah, I probably want the rune bands. It's good tempo. I'm going to trim another unhinge here, I think. Let's do that. Yeah, yeah, Hex. Uh, there we go. Yeah, there's the, there's the Y Hex. Man. That's the, the TLDR of what, what Hex changed. Hex, Hex Ent listens to feedback, and they've implemented a lot of good changes. And their gameplay has always been, always been very reasonable. But they've uh, got some of the details right. 
Maybe Whipcrack is good. We don't know necessarily that they have... We only saw... Oh, I guess we saw a Scapegoat too, right? So we saw a Scapegoat and Bolt Spasm, so Whipcrack's probably worth bringing in. This hand is really good, but it only has one resource. Pretty sure we gotta play Catch and Release there. This hand, um, it's okay. So I only have Runebind as like tempo plays in the early game, but the fact that I have this Candle Gas, which lets me play it when I discard it, means my champion power can put a 4-4 into play on turn three. Dingo Dango, oh boy, didn't even realize my resub was up. Last four days have been crazy for college and the VODs kept me between live sound and mixing a short film. Awesome, well, hope your, hope your school year wrapped up well. Oh, it does tag their champ power too, doesn't it? Light em up is so good against all their X ones too. So light em up is another one of our combo pieces. Uh, when we're not comboing with it, it just illuminates one. And what illuminating does is it either makes a one, one for one, or it takes all of our existing candles and makes them bigger. My opponent attacks here, we're gonna snap this straight off. Oh, no attack, that makes sense. Yeah, definitely, Matt Man. You have a lot of a lot of good tools for the aggressive matchups, I think. Between between Unhinge and Candle Gas and, and Light Em Up. So I get to discard this Candle Gas to my hero power here. And he says when I discard him, I can pay two to put him right into play. So get my get my 4-4 four, four into play. And I'm, I'm not gonna attack here. Like we're definitely we're definitely the defender in this matchup. The longer the game goes, the more we're generally favored, I think. So I just want to play defense and like not take extra points of damage, I think, until I've got the board really stabilized. Runebind here is kind of a powerful tempo card, so what it does is it takes any card on the chain, which is kind of like the stack here, or in play, and transforms it into a mysterious rune, which is basically kind of a stasis state for it until the person that controls that mysterious rune draws a resource. So this card's super flexible because it can tempo a spell that my opponent's playing, or in this case, they're playing a Pyre Strike, which is going to kill my 4-4. Kill my four -four. I'm going to go ahead and runebind my own troop here, so my 4-4 four -four gets kind of slid off to the side, so now it doesn't die to this, and then next time I draw a resource, I'm going to get my 4-4 back. Sabretooth is not bad. That gives us a, a way to kind of kill, kill some larger threats, like if they have a Mama Yeti or something like that. There's things they can do to recover your account from the old vendor, Nam Baza. From my understanding, they have the anonymized data from that, but they don't have, they have to basically have a way to link you to a given anonymized set of data. So if you look on the Hex subreddit, there's links to information you can provide for them to recover your stuff from their, their changeover. All right, well, we're gonna go ahead and Sabertooth this. Unfortunately, the Sabertooth is a basic action, so I couldn't prevent taking that hit from the Mama Yeti. They have another Yeti, I might just rune bind it here. I'm getting kinda low. I don't really want to trade my Candlekin for the Roid Bot because the Candlekin is keeping their 3-1 at bay. This is a pretty good play on their part, just like constantly poking in with this while leaving this back. good all right filter fish let's go hopefully so filter fish every time he attacks i discard a card and then draw a card hopefully this finds a resource for me so i can floop my rune bound thing back into play it did not i think we're dead yeah i can like i can like rune bind this to like not take a hit from this this turn but like this four three and this one one are coming across Maybe I'm just going to, I'm going to rune bind this and then chump a 4-3 here.
Discard two cards, then draw three. That's pretty good. Puts that back into play. So, Brinny Ray alongside Painstoke Sister here should be pretty good. Hopefully, um, hopefully we hit a shard. All right, we we're very dead. This did not quite come together there. Needed uh, needed our four four to come back in sooner, I think, to kind of stabilize the board a little bit. Mama Yeti hit at a good time as well. So it's important to note that like that card that they played is different than Cathartic Reunion. So Cathartic Reunion is an additional cost. You have to discard two cards. Whereas the card that my opponent played there was discard as part of the spell resolution, which means that if my opponent had less than two cards in their hand, they would just get to draw three. So it's, it's one more resource, but it's actually a little bit more powerful. This hand's pretty good. So we get uh, Nameless Draught. He looks like the opponent's playing uh, Cassia, which has the Illuminate ability to make a candle for four charges. We have this Nameless Draught, which pairs well with our Theorize, because it gives us kind of a garbage card to throw away, so it makes Theorize basically a draw two. We have uh, two of our three combo pieces in our hand, so if our opponent doesn't have too aggressive of a start, we should hopefully be able to find our light em up and uh, combo them. This leave is sweet. This is the... Uh, this is the sleeve for this season, it looks like. This is the Twilight Eclipse, right? <laughs> uh, Mulligan a good deal. You can get in for less than $25, too. Like, the, uh, the I assume the budget candles deck is still pretty reasonable, right? Like, the format hasn't really changed that much. In fact, the reanimator decks aren't even playing... The reanimator decks aren't even playing uh, Eternal Seeker anymore, right? So those, those are probably... It's probably good news for people that want to play candles. So looking for some resources here. We get a we get a few looks though. We get we get a draw two here. We get a draw step next turn, and that's uh, that's actually our last combo piece. Light them up. So we actually just need to try and locate a um, need to locate a blood threshold for our voice of Denera. But pain stoke plus voice plus light them up actually deals infinite damage to our opponent. So they mulligan, which means that they mulligan pretty low, which means they're probably not going to be able to assemble anything too terribly aggressive here. Yep. Um, theorize. Get a little bit more information before I play my resource for the turn. I have plenty of resources here. I'm just going to go ahead and bin this nameless drought, I think, since it doesn't give me a charge. Play this and play light him up. Next turn, we can play Painstoke Sister out, and then even if we don't find a blood a blood threshold too quickly, we can use Painstoke Sister to kind of motorboat down their candles because she she pings off different things every time we discard a card. Yeah, I'd, I'd snap trade off a candle here, so no no attack on their part's pretty smart. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and grab resource here. I'm gonna go ahead and play this Pain Stoke Sister out. Grimwatch with the brand new Twitch Prime sub. Thank you very much and welcome. I appreciate that. And there's a lot of great people making a lot of great content on Twitch right now. So thanks for supporting my stuff this month with that. Welcome. Bend this light em up. So let's me ping a candle here. The one with a $5 donation. Hey, Jeff, please put this towards the even spell damage rogue. A long time YouTube lurker. I love all your work. It allows me to sleep. Shout out from your Japan viewers. Thank you for the support. And I'll get that, uh, get that tech down for sure. Are your first steps with hex documented on YouTube? I mean, it's really easy to get into hex for the first time. You just like pick up as far as like getting into constructed goes you just pick up a cheap budget constructed deck and then just jump right into playing on the ladder the ladder doesn't have an entry fee so like while you're still fumbling around and like learning how the game works there's no extra cost in doing that you just get to play and learn awesome Good. I mean, we're still still going to stream a ton of magic on this channel. That's the that's the full time gig. Magic's just offline this morning, and I'm home anyway. So you have to you have to pay for daycare, even if uh, even if the kids don't go. So figure might as well send it. You assume these things are getting larger here. Yeah, making making their candles bigger is really smart because it's going to let them uh, it's going to let them get out of Pain Stokes sister range here. Um, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and play Brinny Ray here. Brinny Ray plus Conjured Candle Gas plus Pain Stoke Sister is pretty good. So we are just looking for a Blood Shard to be able to actually combo them with this Voice of the Denera. So Brinny Ray attacks, which discards Candle Gas, and then he's gonna go ahead and flip this into play. Hats with the Twitch Prime sub. Welcome back, Hats. Thanks for the support. I appreciate that. So Pain Stoke Sister deals a damage to something. And then this is actually part of the combo. So these light em ups I had from earlier, they say whenever you deal non-combat damage to your opponent, they come back to your hand from your discard power. Yep, yeah, the Discord is for subscribers. Details on how to pop into the Discord are here. Play this light em up. I think I'm just gonna make another 1-1 candle. I think just like having extra candles to chump block with is fine. We mostly just wanna like stabilize the board until we can hit a blood and then kill them with these voices. Yep. Their candles are going to go up to 3 3 here. Hmm. I think I'm just going to go ahead and start by attacking with Brinny right here. Because if we hit a, bl a blood, we could kill them potentially. Awesome. Well, I appreciate it, Hats. Welcome back. So I think I want to just like keep their board in check. So like it kind of feels bad to spend removal on candles, but remember, like if they don't have candles, they can't have anything to grow. Brady boy. With the brand new G1 sub. Thank you very much and welcome. I appreciate that. I could play another Pain Stoke out. Yeah, I guess playing another Pain Stoke out here is pretty good. It's going to be more damage when I discard. Just in case, like, we keep struggling to find blood and we just need to, like, win this game through a fair means. Like Brinnyway with Leno would be better served with the I don't know what the Riona champion is. Yeah, yeah, I think we were just gonna win a pretty fair game there, and they ended up packing it in. So uh Scars of War and Whipcrack are both very good against candles. These are both cards that deal deal an array of damage. Unhinge is pretty terrible here because they don't have a lot of actual troops, and this only interrupts troops. Um I actually think cards like Return to Cinder are very good in this matchup. I think being able to use these as spot removal to keep your opponent's board in check is very valuable. Always trying to catch you streaming, but here in the Oz times it's a little awkward. Don't know whether to thank you for getting me back into Hearthstone and Magic at the same time, but I'm thanking you anyways. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. I'm glad you're enjoying sweet games. 
I think I want to trim at least one Theorize. I, th I think cutting all of these is probably wrong. I probably shouldn't have done that in the last match because they do provide good card selection for us. Um, but I definitely like, don't have time to like draw a lot of these. Do you think I should trim Runebind? I feel like Runebind's valuable because against my deck, the opponent, a good opponent is going to know they need to play around Scars of War and Whip Crack, which means they're going to go tall with their candles pretty quickly as opposed to going super wide with them. So I think I think resetting a candle from that perspective is actually pretty valuable in terms of like the tempo that it generates. Runebind can also like save. save my, in fact, I was thinking about I wanted to kind of board in this last one and like trim two Sabertooths. Because, like, resetting a candle is, like, similar to just, like, killing it off the table once it's large. Because between Pain Soak Sisters and Scars and Whip Crack, I think the reset's actually pretty valuable here. I could see an argument for bringing in some number of Verdict of the Ancient Kings, but I don't really have anything that I want to cut. I should probably turn the light on so I'm not standing here in the dark. This hand is probably not good enough. No, I think I think Candle Gas is worth playing. He keeps, he keeps the opponent's candles at bay pretty well. He also like survives through a lot of stuff. I think this is just too slow. The resources are a little bit medium and it's kind of slow. This hand's pretty good. This hand is much better. You get to go turn one. Turn one play. All right, here's a question. If I whip crack them and choose to loot, discard this light em up, do I get the light em up back? Um, Hex has the a similar mulligan system to magic with one, one small asterisk. Um, one player chooses to take all of their mulligans and then you choose to take your mulligan. So like the opponent chooses all the mulligans that they're going to take before I choose whether or not I'm taking any at all. Yeah, I think, I don't think so either. So I think I want to play, do I want to play my lane up here? I drew this theorize, which probably means I just want to theorize on two. I think I'm going to take Ruby here. There aren't that many blood cards in my deck. I know we struggled to hit blood last game, but by and large, I think, uh, I think we don't, uh, don't need to do that. Yep. There's an argument that, like, maybe I should have played this on one just because, like, if I, like, this board state here, I'm probably, I'm probably obligated to, to whip crack here, right? I think, I think I'm obligated to whip crack here. Yeah. And let's, let's find out if this gets me back with the loot. I don't think it does. Yeah, that, that makes sense. That makes sense. I think that's still the discard. If I would if I would have played that on one, I would have gotten it back for free when the whip crack hit them. It's only a two for one, Marty. It only it only killed I only took two of their cards away there. That was that was it was it was like four things on the board, but it was only effectively two cards. So one of the things to keep in mind is that while um, while pre-board, I need double Sapphire single Ruby single blood. While I have Scars of War in my deck, I do actually need to be able to produce double Ruby on occasion. So I'm gonna get I'm gonna get Sapphire here just because I want to hit my champion power and I don't have a a what's it called yet, anyways. I'm gonna go and attack with this Brinny Ray. Go ahead and discard this Theorize. Alright, sweet. And that'll get us our second Ruby anyways, which is nice potentially. I assume they're going to start going tall here. They have... Have they illuminated up? They've illuminated one, two, three, four, five times. So they could... They could choir here, right? If they choir here, we're going to be in a little bit of trouble. That's a little annoying, but not the end of the world. 
If they don't have a way to illuminate here next turn, we can paint Stoke Sister plus ping one of these down, which would be nice. I assume this is going to illuminate. Yeah, yeah, that's smart on their part. We are super fucking dead. So this card, this card's one of the kind of cards that gives candles a lot of legs. It uh, it starts out costing seven, and every time you illuminate, it gets cheaper, and then it illuminates three. So we got to jump their candles up to five fives here. So we're gonna take a hit for ten here. It's it's really unfortunate that they had such an aggressive draw because we're actually set up to combo them starting next turn. Or two turns from now, sorry. But I'm actually not going to live to get there because these are just five fives. Um, yeah, I'm on, I'm on the zero order at this point, I think, right? This is turn... This is this is their turn four, to be fair. It's not turn three. They only have three resources, but it's their turn four. Hey, Verest. Thank you for the two-month resubscription. I do appreciate that. Welcome. I have to actually discard here. Needed. So needed... Needed like a, needed a rune bind or scars of war or a return to center something to keep their board in check a little bit. Maybe they can't. Maybe uh, Matt Man's right and the candle gas just isn't particularly good. Just because like I want to be killing their things. I think I think I'd buy that. I think I'd rather just have saber tooth to like kill their candles off. Wax Sacrament is very, very good. You are not wrong. Uh, speaking of very good, this seems pretty great, right? I've got all my thresholds. I've got a return to Cinder to knock off their first play. I've got a Brinny Ray on two to start filtering my draws. I'm going to take a little bit of damage from these remnants, but I got a Painstoke Sister as well, so. So the dual resources and hex are a little bit worse, fi excuse me, worse fixing than magic in a lot of ways because. While this can make Sapphire or Ruby, I have to pick one or the other. I'm enjoying the Hearthstone content and you're giving... You got me playing competitive Tempo Mage with only $5 spent. That's great. Yeah, the Tempo Mage deck is a lot of fun. 10, 10 out of 10 like the Tempo Mage deck. I think... I think at this point I'm going to bin this remnant of innovation just because I don't want to take that much damage from my resources. Yeah, tempo, tempo, you can build budget tempo mage without any legendaries or any epics. And non-budget tempo mage in Hearthstone right now has three epics and one legendary, so even even the fully stocked tempo mage list is really cheap. I'm pretty sure numbers numbers understands what they're asking and they're just being a troll. In fact, take a take a quick break. Yeah, 12 12k dust you could build non-budget tempo mage Calhoun's. Tempo mage is basically it's very similar to like a burn deck. Briny ray Trying to get me to pronounce things correctly is kind of a losing battle. Am I just discarding this remnant again? Probably. So saber tooth. I'm just gonna go ahead and play this out for blood. Pass the turn here. Yeah, Disgusted Toast website has a lot of a lot of good good meta stuff on it. I think the Tempo Mage deck is arguably tier one, maybe even tier. It's it's tier two at worst. It's arguably tier one. So they've illuminated twice so far. So one of the things you want to kind of keep track of mentally is like how how many times your opponent's illuminated so you can kind of gauge um when you want to when they're going to be able to acquire you 
So opponents going going tall super quickly here, which is smart on their part. But again, this is one of the reasons why I like having a lot of like rune binds and spot removal in your deck because when my opponent plays around things like Whipcrack and Scars of War aggressively, I then get to punish them by um, aggressively using things like Sabretooth to to kill their stuff basically. I could have whip cracked in response, Marty, but there's a non-zero chance that they like were going to make another one one, and then I could whip crack all three of them. And if I didn't, if they didn't, and they did what they did here, I still have plenty of spot removal to actually just plow through them. So I think I think what I did was fine. Yeah, I think I think because I had two pieces of spot removal, I'm I, I'm I'm pretty happy with what I did. Uh, I'm not actually sure what I want to discard here though. I think it might actually be the Painstoke Sister. It's the Painstoke Sister, or I could get greedy and bin the Ruby Shard potentially, but being able to Sabertooth the Candlekin guaranteed post-combat is pretty valuable. I'm pretty sure it's the Ruby or the Sister here. I think it's the Sister just because the opponent's been pretty aggressive about growing their candles, which means the ping on the Sister is a lot less valuable than it otherwise could be. Of course, you could also argue that like if I'm clearing their board anyways here... If I'm clearing their board anyways, I could bin the whip crack because like whip crack is similarly bad if they yeah, I think I'm gonna bin the whip crack actually. I think because they've been so aggressive with growing their things, the whip crack's kind of mediocre. And like next turn, I can they're gonna need to put more candles into play here. So unless they like make candles and grow them up right away here, my pain soak sister's gonna get to come down and then ping something with the Brinny Ray next turn, ideally. Uh, this list I'm playing right now does not have Gift in the Board. I'm testing out, I think it's uh, Nameless Truths or whatever it's called. The, the five cost, pick a bunch of different card types up. Usually when I was boarding in Gift, I was putting the, the discard a card, bounce the thing ge gem in it. No, I was actually putting the protection gem in it, Burgle, because the, the goal of the Mordrum Gifts in the sideboard of this deck is to have a way to... The goal of the Mordrum's Gift is to have a way to um play through hero fall and a lot of spot removal so against heavy interactive decks i want a way to protect my stuff so it's gonna get like super fucking punished for having burned my whip crack here yep play this out and pass the turn we could die now because i discarded that whip crack Maybe that was greedy. I don't know. Like, the fact that I drew voice here is really good for us because it means that if I, I've got, like, two draws at a, uh, at a what's it called? A light em up just to kill them next turn. If they can illuminate five times here, I'm going to be in trouble. But if they can only illuminate three times, I can block and then be dead to a cremate, I guess. Yeah, any sapphire sources are redraw as well. That's true. <sighs> Quire's a really offensive hex card. It's very brutal. Let's try one more with this. If we get dumpstered one more time, I'll probably probably take a rest. Try something else. I'm like, honestly, even if I would have if I would have boarded out. Even if I would have kept the whip crack there, right? Like, I still would have kind of been fucked. I, they would have been, like... They would have gone second choir into make them 2 twos the following turn. I still would have been infinitely behind. Um... I was not planning on streaming Modern today. I'm planning to do Legacy and some Vintage later tonight. Magic Online's downtime is supposed to last through my entire morning stream slot, so... I don't think I'm going to be able to stream any magic this morning unless they unless they come back online sooner rather than later. I will be live uh, this evening about 8.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, but I'm planning to do Vintage and Legacy then. I think we're going to do Modern. We'll definitely do Modern tomorrow. Are they fixing Wall of Roots or something? One could only hope. One could only hope.
We'll play light them up on one here. It looks like another candles matchup. I think we just theorize here. We have this drop of, drop of chaos to bin. This unhinged is pretty mediocre in this matchup. Hopefully the combination of these rune binds and primordial saber tooths can like keep our opponent's candles mostly in check. Peace, Brady boy. Thanks for the support. Have a good sleep. Opponent missing their second threshold so far. If they attack here, we're just gonna like snap trade, right? Like not not particularly close. Yeah, no attack doesn't surprise me. Their candles get a lot bigger than ours do for sure. So worth noting that while our champion power cost three charges, that card that made that drop for us did not give us a charge. So it's kind of a trade-off. It doesn't make the resource, but it gives us a card that we get to discard later. This game does not have cards like Blood Moon or Staring Bridge. It's created by people that are good at game design, by and large. All right, get some illuminates in here. Yeah, Nivik, I didn't want to sort the so my my format column um, in my spreadsheet, Nivik, is it sorts alphabetically. So if I label it vintage, it automatically sorts it to the top above the ones that I labeled today, even. And I didn't, so labeling it Intage is just like a hack to, to be lazy about that. That's pretty fucking good. Yeah, this deck I'm playing probably isn't very good. Probably isn't very good. I think we're just going, we're just going nuts on resetting their candles here. There's a Blood Diamond Aristocrat style deck that's pretty good right now. So like if you have the if you have the dual shards from the previous Blood Diamond deck, those will port over for sure. I'm just gonna kill their shit here. This can't block anyway, so we'll kill this and nug them for one. The problem is the opponent hasn't even hasn't even used a choir yet, so there's a good chance we just get uh a good chance we just get run out here again i'm not sure offhand minibu do you want to look at burgles i don't even think the health's the issue burgle like did you were you did you not watch that last match that i played like i didn't i didn't lose that last match that we played by inches i lost that last match by like fucking miles like i would i would agree with your assessment if like i was losing if I like was losing to this aggressive deck by like inches, but I'm not losing by inches. I'm losing by like swaths. And in, in my experience, like the, the games I'm losing to these aggro decks, they're not, they're not like tiny. They're not like tiny grinds that I'm losing. They're like, I'm getting, I'm getting just like run the fuck over by, by a good, good margin. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree, Burgle. Like, I agree that aggro decks have nut draws, but I'm saying, like, the draws I'm losing to aren't because of my health total or because of that I'm taking damage from some of my resources. I don't know. In my experience, it's the average candle draw. There's always a bunch of there's always a bunch of choirs. It's like the Tron rule, right? When do they have turn three Tron? Always. When do you have it? Never. So, Sabretooth is a modal card, so Sabretooth has a seven cost if I want to play it out as a troop, but it also has an activated ability while it's in my hand that allows me to pay two and reveal it and deal five damage to something, then put this back into my deck. So it's a very powerful card because it's not just a seven drop that rots in my hand. In the early game, it's also basically a copy of Roast that can hit flying troops even. So modal, modal, modal cards are just like good design, right? Like cards that do different things in different situations are just fantastic in card games in general.
Correct, you are not missing anything. This card does in fact cost seven to play. Can you be more specific, Julian? What's what's rough around the edges? I think I think this is actually a really great card design. I think I think this is fantastic. I think I think if modern No, yeah, feel free to ask all the dumb questions you want. Questions are great. If we didn't want to answer questions, I wouldn't stream. If like if modern had more cards like this, control decks would be playable. Like this this style of card being good is one of the things that makes hex great. Like Modal, modal cards are fantastic. They allow players to make decisions. They allow for less non-games by your cards lining up more often, ideally. Um, so I missed a resource here, which I think means at this point, I just need to mow down my opponent's candles because like if with three candles in play, I'm like two more in mysterious runes here. If they find something that lets them illuminate, I'm just going to die very, very quickly. And my health total is already pretty low. So I'm pretty sure I just want to spend my, my spot removal mowing these down. So we know they drew a resource this turn, but they have three other cards that are likely non-resources. The Sapphire Primordial is actually seeing play in the sideboard of the, uh, what's it called deck? Um, the Sugar Rush deck. The Hex Combat System borrows, borrows from Magic the Gathering, so it's gonna feel, it's gonna feel familiar from that aspect. Hex, heck, I often describe Hex as it's what magic would be if magic was designed in the 21st century. Is there a choir here to kill me? Wrath, sure. Probably dead since we lost that. I'm trying to think, I know this is a game one, so I don't like have Scars of War or Whip Crack in my deck to draw to here. No, I, this is this is a game one. We we queued into candles for a second time. I think I'm pretty happy with how I boarded last time. And cut these unhinges and a couple of candle gas, I think. Like, I'm not gonna bring in the third rune bind. I think two is just fine. I tried whip cracks in the main and like when you're playing against candles, yeah, they seem like great main deck cards. When you're playing against things that they don't have text boxes against, they're really fucking terrible. Like really bad. I think our light em ups just like aren't even really worth cards in this matchup. So I'm just gonna keep these in my hand to discard to things like my champion power and Brinny Ray here, I think. So while I'm gonna play this remnant and make Ruby on one, I'm actually not gonna play a light em up. Yeah, definitely. If you're looking, Hex definitely generates the the quality, like, sit down and play for a while style gameplay, whereas, like, Hearthstone actually, like, it's funny, I was talking about this after I streamed Hearthstone last night, like, when I sit down and play Hearthstone for, like, two and a half, three hours straight, I kind of feel like, it's it's kind of, I kind of feel, like, spent at the end of it, or, like, like, I'm not really, like, I don't know what the best way to phrase it is, but I just, I feel different after sitting down and, like, playing Hex or Magic for, for three or four hours, as opposed to, like, playing Hearthstone, I just, like, I enjoy playing these games for a longer amount of time than I'm playing Hearthstone. Like, like I enjoy Hearthstone as a game. It has a lot of great gameplay, but it's not really a game. I don't. I don't even think it's just the. I don't even think it's just the RNG. I think it's. I think a big part of it is because the games in Hearthstone tend to be shorter. You play so many more games in such a condensed period of time that it feels more taxing. Maybe I think that's the. That's the best thing I can think of, at least. But I do know that, like, just from a perspective of, like, what I'm doing, it fe it feels different playing for hours. Yeah. 
Like, I don't, like, like honestly, a part of me is almost glad the Hearthstone's, like, been a little bit medium on numbers, because, like, I don't think I could play that game for seven hours a day like I do Magic. And maybe it's just because, like, I'm more familiar with Magic and Hex at this point, but, like, and like I said, don't get me wrong, like, I've really enjoyed Hearthstone's gameplay, and it's very interactive and creates games that are, that are genuinely different than Hex and Magic, but I just feel like it's not the same thing that I could, it's, it's like, it's a game where I want to play it for 45 minutes while I walk on the treadmill. It's not a game that I want to grind for seven hours while I stream. So I ended up playing this out here because I wanted to, um, I wanted to be able to have a good blocker for this Acolyte of Flame, and now this Painstoke Sister is just gonna fucking brutalize my opponent. So Painstoke Sisters, whenever we discard a card, we get to ping something. So I'm actually gonna get aggressive here, because I think we could just win this through a fair game. So I'm gonna go ahead and ping this candle down. And then we're gonna get to fire off my champion power here too, which will allow me to ping this next candle down, which is great. We're gonna keep their I'm going to keep their board pretty well in check here while we beat them down. And while we haven't actually gotten to combo anyone yet today, um, this deck, I like it because against decks that aren't hyper-aggressive, you can play kind of this, like, mid-range fair backup plan. And since we found this blood resource here, if they can't kill my pain stoke sister, we're actually going to get to play voice and combo kill my opponent next turn. And we needed, we needed the blood in order to combo next turn, and we were able to find it since we drew so many cards. Okay, sweet. So they're they're not worried about the combo. I guess we we didn't show them any blood resources in the first game either, right? And like this combo isn't super popular, so they they genuinely might not be expecting the combo here. They shouldn't have anything at one that interacts. So how the combo works is we discard a card with voice from our hand. Actually, actually I can just discard with this to get started. And then Pain Stoke Sister is going to deal one damage to my opponent. And then when Pain Stoke Sister deals a damage to my opponent, she returns these two light em ups to my hand. And now Voice is going to let me discard this light em up to get another discard action and ping my opponent here. So we get to loop dealing one damage with Pain Stoke Sisters, making my voice bigger as many times as we want because this light em up keeps coming back to my hand. So my opponent is dead. Just have to click a little bit here. Yeah, yeah, and the fact that, like, so, Hex, when you get to see their champions, it can allow you to predict, like, what your opponent's playing if they're playing a more popular meta deck. But the champion choice can also, if you're playing an off-meta deck, can be valuable in hiding what your actual plan is. Because your opponent could see, like, Sparrow and assume you're Reanimator, or if you're playing another popular champion in a brew, like, stuff like that. Yeah, Pain, Pain Stoke Sister makes like a whip sound every time her trigger goes off. Yeah, yeah, exactly, Meta Moods. How do the champions work? So the champions give you, the champions control your starting health total. So the starting health total on champions ranges from 16 to 26. And they also have an ability that's different depending on what your champion is. And they cost different amounts of charges, and you gain charges by playing out most resources or by playing specific cards. I'm going to be playing Magic this evening, starting about 8.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Magic Online is currently in extended downtime from now until, like, the next three or four hours from now. So unless Magic Online comes out of downtime in, like, the next hour and a half, I'm not going to have time to play this morning. Because I, uh, I have stuff to do this afternoon. That I had I had planned. I didn't realize that they were doing extended downtime today. It was silly me. I assumed there wouldn't be extended downtime the week of the Pro Tour. Whoops. Whoopsie. Why Hex Hex is Hex is created largely by smart people. When they do downtime, they do downtime overnight instead of middle of the day US. There's actually not downtime every Wednesday anymore. There's actually not downtime every Wednesday anymore. Oh, Peacock, that's how, right? It's like casual 20 minutes on the clock. You're like, make you do it. Make, make you do it. Are these candle gas worse than Verdict of the Ancient Kings? 
What do we think? That that might be the case, right? Like these candle gas seem pretty mediocre. Like when my opponent's really going off, this is not blocking their shit. I think, I think, so I don't want too many because it can get like gummed up in your hand, but like, yeah, being able to tag, tag like a key, um, choir is pretty good. So one of the reasons why I think this build of this deck is actually pretty good is I think with four unhinge, um, a combo finish of her own and four verdict the Kings, I think this deck actually lines up very well against the Rowdy deck, which is one of the better decks in this format. I think you can struggle a bit against um, against some of these aggressive decks sometimes, but you have you have tools to be successful here if your draw lines up well. But I do I do think this deck has a good matchup against the other combo decks in the format, just because it's got it's got a, a efficient a cheap combo of our own along with efficient disruption. The the rowdy deck really leans into its troops to play its combo, so like having four unhenges in our deck is very good against them. We also have scars of war that can take dream smoke piper off the table once they resolve it, which is nice. There is a match clock. If you look at the left side of the screen there, you'll note that even after my opponent made me click through that combo, I am up two minutes on clock on them. They have 21 minutes and I have 23 minutes. Sounds probably fine, right? I've got two of my three combo pieces. I need to draw some resources, but like some hands need land, some hands need spells. So I'm going to lead on Ruby here, even though I could hold Runebind up, because this Nameless draw on the draw creates a card in my hand. I would have to discard it to hand size here. So hopefully they, they Illuminate or something here to allow me to have something to Primordial Sabertooth on too, so that way I don't have to discard to hand size. Yeah, like even this Acolyte of Flame here, I'm just going to go ahead and play Nameless draw and then Sabertooth it. It's going on speed, yep. I don't know how much Hex Standard I plan to play in the long term. I, I'm gonna. I'm mostly just looking at to cosmic this season, and then probably stop. But I'm really looking forward to playing Immortal Gauntlets when they start next week. Non non rotating formats are kind of my jam. There's always there's always a lot to do when you have a lot of a lot of sets, a lot of sets to pick from. So I am I'm excited to jam jam some Immortal. So the resources in this game, instead of having specific resource lands that you have to tap, when you play a resource, it adds one to your total resource pool and then gives you a color of that resource. Man, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. And the, the nameless drop gives us the discard with the whip crack. If you want a written specifics on how the resource system works, I have details here. The, the re eternal carbon copied hexes resource system. So they just, they, they basically copy and paste the Hex's resource system. Yep, and if you have any questions about specifics, feel free to ask. So this is a pretty easy just verdict, right? Just like stop this dead in its tracks. We're gonna take a crack for three here, but I think that's fine. I think if I'm going to miss my shard drop next turn, I'm going to go ahead and play whip crack. Yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and whip crack here. I'm pretty happy to whip crack this board anyways. And if it propels me to my shard drop, that's ideal. Sweet, I get to discard this drop of chaos now. Play this shard out. So that gives me enough resources for Painstoke Sister next turn. Do I want to loot here in order to try and find a two drop to play this turn? I don't think I do because the loot next turn is valuable because Painstoke Sister says when I discard a card, I get to deal a damage. So if I wait till next turn to loot, I get to deal damage with Painstoke Sister. Good, good candles players are going to go big early against a deck that has Scars of War in it, show. So in, in my experience, good candles players are going to be really defensive about how quickly they're going to go big. I think I just want to theorize here. We're really looking for a blood threshold, right? All right, sweet. So that's that's the light em up, which means if we can find a blood threshold here and get Pain Stoke Sister and Voice in play, we're going to get to combo them.
And that's, and again, like I said this earlier, one of the reasons why I really like being a, leaving all the spot removal in, in this deck is because the spot removal puts good, puts good candles players in a bad spot because good candles players are going to go big fast and then spot removal lets you punish them for going big quickly. Speed, thanks for the three month three subscription, bud. I appreciate that. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. All right, am I just going to bin a voice here since I have multiple of them? Yeah, I think so. We get to go ahead and ping this. And I think we're, we're kind of bridging the gap here, right? If we don't get acquired ASAP, especially if they can't kill this Painstoke sister, we're going to be ahead in a pretty big way here. Like I said, they're they're nuts. Quiet. Maybe I just haven't been boarding right, and I should just be bringing in two two to three verdict of the ancient kings. Because like the fact that we were able to stop their choir on four was pretty huge this game. I could see that being hurt. I don't think I want all four verdicts, but I think having a few of them is good. That's pretty good. Rekindle. Put three troops. Yep. All right, come on. Give me a blood shard. Give me a blood shard. I actually can't play that yet. So I think I'm binning a Sabertooth here. I'm going to go ahead and attack with both of these if they let me. Okay, they have a Wrath of the Elements for that. That's unfortunate. Do I want to save this? Oh, I can't even save this because Runebind, this target's any permanent, right? Yeah, that's unfortunate. So... I kind of think I just want to hold Runebind here, right? I kind of think I just want to hold Runebind up here because if I don't die and I draw a Blood Shard or even a, even a Ruby Shard is great at this point so it lets me play Scars of War. So I think I just want to like not die and try and draw to my combo, right? And if I don't draw a resource next turn, I might just double Sabertooth. Perfect. Perfect. And the fact that I have this rune bind in my hand to kind of insulate against like an instant speed illuminate out of my opponent means the Scars of War is like extra deadly. So like I can be I can be greedy with the Scars of War because I can protect them from punishing my greed by having a rune bind up to interact. Quick speed interaction is great. Allows for a lot of back and forth. Candlelight. That's... That's a lot of fucking damage. Wow. Do I runebind this? I'm probably supposed to runebind this, right? And I think I'm just burning my scars here anyways, just so I don't take any more damage. Magic Online's downtime is scheduled to be done at 2 p.m. CST today, which is three and a half hours from now. All right. Well, heaven again. The third, the third threshold in this deck is not free by any stretch of the imagination. So, definitely getting a little bit punished for the fact that our resource base is slightly ambitious. They bricked on this for a turn. That's good for us. Even if we draw a non-blood resource next turn, that means we get to start slamming Sabertooth, which will just close the door in a fair game very quickly here. That's really unfortunate. That's probably going to end the game. I'm really kind of surprised that that card's in their deck against us post-board. That's, that's a great draw. And then Brinny Ray here, light whip crack picks back up, light him up. One one good draw deserves another, I suppose. I so I think we've run we've run a little bit bad today. Um, this like we we've seen twenty cards. So like I'm gonna I'm just gonna pull up the math. What's the hyper hyper geometric calculator? So like this game, for instance, we've seen. 60 we have we have eight blood sources and we've seen 20 cards so we are in 20 cards we are 97 percent to have a blood source in our in our top 20 cards yeah so we're we're in we're in the we're in the three percenter right now 
We are we are in the three percenter at the moment. And now I'm actually just supposed to like jam this saber tooth down their throat, right? I guess if I played the voice, they're dead next turn. Maybe I'm supposed to play the voice actually, because then they're dead next turn anyways. Because this plus Sabertooth is lethal. I am dead to like flame lick plus hit a resource here on this. The fact they didn't hit a resource on that is amazing for us. No, no, I, I don't think Kiki Court is a very good deck in the slightest. I g g genuinely think it is clunky and slow and not very good. They need a piece of spot removal here or they're dead. Because this kills this and they can jump here and take exactly six. This is still lethal. This is still lethal. Like, if they have this return to Cinder, I'm still not lethal last turn any this turn anyways. I could have, like, played voice plus activated cat, maybe. All right, so they just drew a shard here, too. So they're going to put us to two, and then their last card's a shard. So they should be dead. I guess they could have a drop of wax here to not be dead on board, but the second Sabertooth says they're dead. I mean, like, is the opponent really getting that unlucky if they're, like, never drawing a resource in the mid to late game? Like, it's a double-edged sword, right? Like, they want to they want to win the game, obviously, but, like, at the same time, they want to they want to undo their spell, but at the same time, they want to, they want to, like, draw gas as well. That was a close set. Yeah, after playing that game, especially after my opponent brought in, like, Candlelight post board, I feel like bringing in Candlelight's the thing people are going to do a non-zero amount of the time. So I should probably just hedge and board in three verdicts in that matchup. Should probably just hedge and board in three verdicts in that matchup. Oh, look, my booster pack sold. I went two and two in the Hex Bash on Sunday, so I got some Doombringer booster packs. Yeah, roots actually allow for an amazing amount of flexibility and variability with uh, with that. Do I want to play something else? I have a couple other decks built. I'll stay up built. 